Hello, my name is Andy from Oxford Computer Training. You're about to see an excerpt from one of our Azure AD Connect videos. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to our Azure AD Connect identity expert. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, in this video, we're going to look in more detail at transformations. We've already touched on them in the last video, but now we really dig into transformations, functions, and all the issues around transformations. So here is your agenda. I won't read through it, just to give you an idea of the topics that are coming up. OK, let's move on to the next slide. Now, we've already talked about transformations, and indeed, we've even demoed changing some transformations. But let's just do a quick bit of revision before we dive into the rest of it. The flow type is going to be either direct, a constant, or an expression. Direct when you simply want to take the value of a source attribute and flow it to a target attribute. Remember, the source uh, in an inbound will be connector space, and the source in an outbound will be the metaverse, and the other way around for the target. The target attribute is an attribute on the target object that's going to be populated. The source is, as we said, either the attribute itself or a constant value. It's fairly unusual to flow just a constant value, but we do have a few examples coming up. Or an expression. And of course, that depends on the flow type that you've chosen. I've mentioned apply once, but I haven't formally stated it really. It doesn't have a lot of application. And in fact, the only example we ever come up with is flowing an initial password, where you want to flow the password once, but you never want to flow it again. You don't want to change it. And then we've got merge type. Now, we've got a topic coming up which will fully cover merge type. For the moment, we'll say that the merge type can only be either update or replace, which weirdly are the same thing. Uh, I, we assume that there were two different programmers working on this product at the same time, and they use different words. They mean the same thing. And then there's two kinds of merge, which we will come to in due course. OK, expressions. Expressions are based on VBA, Visual Basic for Applications. But it's not the whole of VBA, and it does have some additions of its own. You nest functions as needed. There's no concept of structured statements like go to, while, and for, and you can't assign results to variables. And importantly, it's case sensitive in all aspects. Functions, attribute names, these are case sensitive. Very easy to get this wrong. Here are some example functions. You've seen a number of example functions already. I don't think we need to read through these. I'm simply putting up this slide to give you an idea of the range of functions, and they fit into various categories. You've seen some of them, uh, such as ones for formatting dates and for uh, evaluating, such as is, is null or empty, that kind of thing. Uh, you've seen a few math ones. You've, we probably briefly looked at bit and. There's one coming up. IF we saw, and there are other ways of handling program flow. And then we saw some text ones, L trim and UCase, for example. There's obviously a, a function reference, which you can Google easily enough um, for Azure AD Connect. So you'll find the functions that you need when you need them. There's no need for us to list them all out here. Attributes and literals. Attributes are always uh, included in square brackets. And don't forget, they're case sensitive. Occasionally, just occasionally, we've seen for some functions double quotation marks used as well. There's no explanation for this, no documentation that we can find. The conventions for literals are probably as you would expect. If it's text, if it's a string, in other words, a character string, it goes in double quotes. Numbers are done like numbers, and you can have true and false, just as you see there, capitalized. Numeric constants can be prefixed by ampersand h if you want to put it into hexadecimal. And then you can have CRLF for character and line feed, and null, meaning don't flow a value. I have more to say about null in a little while. There are two pre-populated out-of-the-box metaverse attributes. They're not really attributes because you can't see them and manipulate them in quite the same way. But you can make use of them in the sense that you can get, you, you can't write to these, obviously, but you can get the contributing connector user, in other words, the connector GUID that provided the source anchor and UPN, 
and the contributing connector exchange, the connector GUID that provided popular exchange attributes. This may seem a little odd at this point, but we're sometimes interested in when we've got two representations of a user in two different forests. In other words, we've got a forest where perhaps the active user is. We might have a resource forest which is supporting exchange. It's interesting for us to be able to say, well, what is the GUID of the user that provided the, the active attributes, the, the attributes of the active user, which we characterise in terms of source anchor and UPN, or alternatively, the exchange ones. And, and that's the exchange attributes are, are things like mail and the, the, the sort of user attributes, the personal attributes. There are also things called parameters. Parameters can be predefined or you can define them yourself. The ones that are predefined uh, by Microsoft uh, fall into two, uh, at two levels, they're defined at two levels, connector and partition. The global ones can be defined by PowerShell and you can add to those if you want to. All parameters are expressed uh, in percent symbols. So here are, is an example of some of them. These clearly are predefined ones, defined by Microsoft, at the levels partition and connector, not at the global level. And so you'll get the idea, if you think that a connector is likely to be associated with a forest, of course, if it's an Azure AD one, it won't be, but if it's an AD connector, it's going to be associated with a forest, then uh, it's interesting for us to be able to get the uh, NetBIOS uh, format of the forest name or the FQDN format of it uh, and, and so on. So these are pre-populated so that when you're writing a rule that relates to a particular connector, you can pull out the forest name in these different forms, or indeed the connector ID. Within a forest, you can have partitions, uh, but partitions are, generally speaking in LDAP, you can have a partition, but for forests, the partition means a domain. And so when we talk about the partition level, we're really talking the domain level, and this allows you to pull out the name of a domain as needed in its different formats uh, when you're writing a rule. So it means that you can have a rule which is generic and applies to different, uh, equally to different forests, and yet is particular to that forest because you're able to actually uh, pull out the appropriate name. So you can think of it as a bit like a macro expansion, I suppose. Global parameters. Global parameters are defined by PowerShell. Actually, using PowerShell, you can also see the per connector parameters if you want to, and we show you there the code for doing it. To see the global settings, though, you would use that second script there, just where it says to see global settings. And to add a parameter of your own, you would do that using the script shown there. So that would add a parameter called my parameter with a particular parameter value. Once you've added parameters of your own, and we do have an example that comes up later on, once you've had an, got an exam, uh, parameter of your own, you can then freely use those in your own rules. So again, this gives you a way of pre-populating a sort of, um, it's a little bit like a macro expansion. You have been watching an excerpt from one of 26 authoritative demonstration and explanation videos in our Azure AD Connect video series. If you'd like access to more free resources from us, want to find out more about these videos and the other courses that we offer, please visit our website. Thank you for watching.